So by popular request, I got asked to do a video on my standard rosemary in the veggie garden. Now this is, um, I want to start with choosing the right variety of rosemary. Now I've got about four or five different cultivars of rosemary in our garden. Uh, sorry about the road noise. But um, so this one I want to start with here. This one is uh, Blue Lagoon which um, looks kind of upright, it, it's, it, but I really have to trim this quite hard to stop it spreading quite far. This is a wonderful for like a low hedge or a ground cover or to spill down a retaining wall or anywhere like that. It is really tough and really hardy. Doesn't look back, doesn't need any substantial care whatsoever. Um, it gets watered in the, in the garden here once a week and gets fertilized a couple of times a year, just with the rest of the garden in general. But for the most part, this is a great variety just for, um, for in the garden as a ground cover. Now this variety here that we've planted along this really dry, um, hot, you can see the driveway on this side on our neighbour's property. These are um, in a really dry, hot spot. These are um, a culinary type rosemary, so these are great for, um, for like cooking with. They've got great oil content in their leaves. But for the most part, this won't get a lot bigger than what it is. They don't get to about, a, they only get to about a metre high or so. Um, but great variety, but not quite what we're looking for to make a standard rosemary out of. So here on this corner is a little ground cover one. This is a pink flowering rosemary. It's very beautiful, it's very ornamental, but also again, won't be suitable for making a topiary rosemary at all because of its habit, the way it naturally wants to grow. Enjoy it for its beautiful ground, covering habit and it's wonderful wonderful pink blooms which the bees adore it's also great to eat it's so here you can see is our standard rosemary we, we do have in our veggie garden so i probably get it's probably this and the weeping sephora and the wigandia are my three most commented plants in the garden um, so this is a variety called tuscan blue now um, this is the only variety that i know will get to enough height and size with enough straight upwards growth it's naturally the way it wants to grow, is to form a straight trunk like you can see here. Um, it's a bit hidden by all the borage and the bees and everything, but it gets this wonderful straight trunk. Um, beautiful upright growth. So it does take a little bit to get to form the wall, but once you have the right framework in place, it is wonderful and a great, great um, topiary. Um, I trim this a couple of times a year. I will actually let it get quite large at times. I'll probably let it get a little bit too long last time. It's got a lot of dead wood in it. I definitely won't, I'll be trimming it a little bit more often um, this year to maintain it a bit better. Um, probably the only thing with rosemaries is unless they are trimmed regularly, you are going to shorten their lifespan. So trimming them once a month, just a light trim like this is due now to tighten it up, um, is definitely really, really, really fantastic. Now lots of people ask me, um, when do I start training? And the answer is at this stage here. When I'm doing the cuttings, you need to make sure that you're getting a nice straight upward growing cutting. Um, that is um, really quite a nice piece of material. It's a little bit curved, but it'll, that's what we're after is a nice straight cutting. One that hasn't had the, um, the tip taken out. So you don't want one with the tip taken out because otherwise you won't get, you'll, all you'll get is sideways branching. You need to start with um, central leader type cuttings. They're gonna grow away and um, continue to form that nice single straight trunk. So what's the next stage? Well, when you come to the nursery, you need to be looking for the right sort of plant. Now, here is two examples of two different rosemaries. As you can see, we have um, this one here in my left has got a nice straight trunk with some side shoots. This one here has got a bit of a, the main trunk has got a, quite a wobble, a lean to it, as you can see, with all of these shoots trying to form a nice healthy shrub. This is not the sort of plant that you're going to use to make a topiary rosemary out of. Um, what you are definitely going to be looking for is one like this um, that you can train into a standard. Now, um, what I would do is if I bought this plant, which you know you can pick them up for a few dollars, you know, six bucks or so, um, is you can just take off all of these side shoots. You don't need them, you can use them in cooking, you can do whatever, I don't mind. Throw them in the bin, throw them in the compost rather, not the bin. And see then we have what we call, you know, what's got a central leader. It's still got all this, so you want to leave these short side shoots because they're going to provide energy and food for your um, cutting, so you def uh, for your standard, so you don't want to be, um, you know, like ripping every single leaf off because otherwise it won't be able to grow. 
Now, if you look really close, you can see that I have torn those. Um, it's not really focusing super well, I'm sorry. You can see how I have taken those, um, peeled those branches off on both sides. So um, it's taken out all of the dormant buds that are around the, um, the shoot. If you cut that, it encourages new growth. If you slip it off when it's small, you stand a much better chance of getting um, rid of all those buds and you won't get regrowth from those points. So this one here, I've had in the pot for about, not quite a month, probably about three weeks. Um, I can start to take some more of these shot side shoots off. Not all of them, I'm not all concerned. Don't do it all at once, otherwise the plant will have no energy left. Um, I'm just gonna move this clip um, it's got a tiny little stake in beside it. I'm just going to move this clip up to here to keep it nice and straight. That's the most important thing is keeping this so, this well supported as it's not its natural way to grow until its root system establishes itself. Um, just make sure nothing ever ta um, happens to this tip and you will be fine. From this point, it's really quite easy. You train this growth to grow to the height that you want it. So you'll need to put a bigger stake in, obviously, as time goes on. Um, and then you just keep training this growth and over the course of probably about six to eight months You'll have it to the height you want it to Then what you want to do is essentially then you want that plant to become a shrub So you then want to take um, Once you grow it about 10 centimeters above where you want the bottom of it to be So if you want your sphere to be this round you start you, you take this tip out so you've got some branching to come out from that point to form the ball. So make sure it's just a little bit taller than what you think you're going to need and you won't look back. Um, take that, you know, couple of foot, those, you know, that tip out. That will then encourage these side branching. You then tip prune those every day. You go out and if there's a little shoot, you take the tip out. Once a week, you go out there and if there's a shoot, you take that, you just take just the top little tip out of it. Just the top, you know, three or four leaves. That'll encourage really dense bushy growth, which is what you need to be able to set up a beautiful standard. You can just keep tip pruning, tip pruning. It's gonna take about 12 months. So 12 months to get to the height that you want it to be, and then a further 12 months to, um, to get the overall size that you are looking for from um, your ball. And then, so the one in the garden's three years old. So it's had a 12 months to then mature from. So now I thought I'd quickly show you me clipping the um, established rosemary ball. So there you have it guys, a quick tutorial on how to create a beautiful standard rosemary in your garden. Um, trick, right variety, right training, and um, right location as well. Full sun's definitely best for them. Okay, have a great day guys, and we'll see you in the next one.